Hi there folks and welcome back. In our last lesson we introduced parametric surfaces, which were sort of like parametric curves, except now we have a second parameter in our equations. With just one parameter, our equations would sketch out some curved line in space. But with two parameters, we can actually trace out entire surfaces. We saw that we can use these equations to describe graphs of functions, z equals f of x, y, but also more general surfaces like spheres and cylinders. Now that we know what parametric surfaces are all about, we can start doing some calculus with them. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to find the equation of a tangent plane to a parametric surface at a given point. So let's suppose that we have some parametric equation, r of uv equals x of uv, y of uv, and z of uv, and the corresponding parametric surface is something like this. These dashed lines that you see here are the grid lines that I mentioned in my last video. They're what we get by setting one of the parameters equal to a constant and letting the other parameter range over its entire interval of values. So maybe this line here is what we get by setting u equal to u naught and letting v range over its domain. And maybe this line here is what we get by setting v equal to v naught and letting u range over its domain. Okay, let's say that we want to find the equation of the tangent plane to our surface at this point right here, u naught v naught. Maybe the tangent plane looks something like this. Hmm, we could find that equation if we knew a normal vector to the curve at that point. But how do we find that normal vector? Well, the key observation is to note that the tangent plane must contain both the tangent vector along the pink grid line and the tangent vector along the yellow grid line. If we could find these two tangent vectors at u0, v0, their cross product would give us a normal vector. Now the good news is we know how to find those tangent vectors. I mean, think about it. This pink curve is really a parametric curve traced out by this vector function. This is a vector function of one parameter, and we know how to find the tangent vector to such a curve. We look at the derivative of our vector function. So my tangent vector at u0, v0 would be the derivative of r u v0 with respect to u evaluated at u equals u0. I can bring the derivative inside and differentiate each component separately. This gives me dx by du, dy by du, dz by du, and I evaluate the whole thing at u0, v0. That's this tangent vector you see here, which maybe we'll call ru. To find the other tangent vector, we do the same thing, except now we're going to be differentiating with respect to v. So my second tangent vector is dr of u0 v with respect to v, which is dx by dv, dy by dv, dz by dv, and I'm going to evaluate the whole thing at u0 v0. We'll call that vector rv. Okay, if we can calculate both of these tangent vectors, we agree that their cross product will give us a normal vector. So this is the big takeaway. A normal vector to our parametric curve at the point u0, v0 is given by the cross product of ru and rv, where we obtain these two vectors using the expressions above. Let's try an example so you can see how all this works. Okay, let's take a look at this example together. Here, we're dealing with a parametric surface described by this scary looking equation. We are looking for the equation of the tangent plane to our surface at the point x, y, z equals 1, 9, 3. To find this equation, we'll need a vector that's normal to our curve at the given point. And fortunately, we learned how to find such a vector on the last slide. We take the cross product of ru and rv, where these vectors are obtained by differentiating our vector function with respect to u and v, respectively. So let's first take the derivative with respect to u. That gives us ru equals 0, for u and 1. Now if we differentiate with respect to v, we get rv equals 4v cubed, 0, 1. Now we need to evaluate these derivatives at some point, u0, v0, right? But here we're only given the values of x, y, and z. We're going to have to use this information to figure out the values of u and v at this point. So let's look at the first component x is equal to v to the 4, and that's supposed to have a value of 1. 
So it tells me that v is either plus or minus 1. Likewise, we know that y is equal to 1 plus 2u squared, and that has a value of 9. If you rearrange this equation, you'll find that u is either plus or minus 2. Hmm. Based on the last equation, though, we know that u and v must sum to 3. And therefore, from our earlier values, we see there's really only one possibility. u is 2, v is 1. So we're going to be evaluating these derivatives at the point 2, 1. My first derivative, r u, is given by 0, 8, 1. And my second derivative, r v, is given by 4, 0, 1. To find the vector that's perpendicular to our curve at this point, we take the cross product. Our normal vector is r u cross r v, which is the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. i, j, k go in the top row, then we include the vector r u, 0, 8, 1, and then the vector r v, 4, 0, 1. Now I'm not going to work through all the details here, but I'll leave it to you to check that you should get 8i plus 4j minus 32k. That's our normal vector. And therefore, the equation of the tangent plane at the point x, y, z equals 1, 9, 3 is 8 times x minus 1 plus 4 times y minus 9 minus 32 z minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to end this video by considering the special case where we're dealing with the graph of a function, z equals f of x, y. We learned how to find the equation of a tangent plane to such a surface way earlier in our course, right? We just have to look at the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. But the nice thing is, this process that we've outlined allows us to very easily find a normal vector to our curve at a given point, and it saves us from computing a cross product every single time. Let me show you how we can simplify the process. If we're dealing with a function z equals f of x, y, then we can parametrize it using this vector function, r of x, y equals x, y, f of x, y. That means that our tangent vectors r, x, and r, y can be obtained by differentiating with respect to x and y. We get 1, 0, partial f by partial x, that's our first tangent vector, and for our second tangent vector, 0, 1, partial f by partial y. If we want a normal vector to our curve, we take the cross product. It's the determinant of i, j, k, 1, 0, partial f by partial x, 0, 1, partial f by partial y. Evaluating this determinant, we get minus partial f by partial x, minus partial f by partial y, and 1. And there you go. This is a normal vector to our curve at a given point x, y. Being able to calculate normal vectors is going to be extremely important to us in our next lesson when we talk about surface integrals. And in the special case that we're dealing with a graph of a function, z equals f of x, y, this little formula is going to save us from doing a cross product every single time.